I have six testimonies, and these different testimonies actually happen in a period of two days. Um, so get ready for more, Church of God. Get ready. These are only a few. I know that there are more. I know that there are more. But these are the few that I'm aware of that people told me about. So you, you know, let me know what's happening, okay? Let me, tell me about the testimonies. But number one, on Thursday, we had three frozen shoulders instantly healed here at the house of glory after receiving prayer <laughs> praise you lord you guys know what a frozen shoulder is they're like it's stuck they can't worship god right it's like hallelujah come on that devil is a lying thief yes, yes. tries to stop you in every way he possibly can but they instantly got healed all the way up they can worship no more frozen shoulder forget this it's going to take about a year no how about a moment with the king yeah. how about a moment with the king in one moment that was number one. Number two, I have a, this one was an email sent to me, happened just this week, it's been happening. She says, I don't have words to explain what Jesus has done to my practice. I have healings after healings and even a deliverance. She said, one lady called me a dragon slayer. I, I've, been overcome, I've been overcome with appointments, all referrals and all word of mouth. No social media. The Lord told me to double my giving. And the blessings are chasing me down. Amen. And she says, Woohoo, praise the Lord. She says, I love my church with all my heart. And I can't imagine being anywhere else. I thought, thank you, Father. What a great way to start out this new year. We got healings of, of physical healings. We have healings that are financial, right? Number three, someone tested positive for COVID and she said she couldn't even drive home from the test. She felt so weak and she felt so dizzy and so fatigued. She sat in her car and she decided to turn on Facebook Live. And when she's turned on Facebook Live, she saw one of my rebroadcasts. And she said it only took three about three sentences into the message she said for her to listen to and immediately she said she was moved in her spirit and everything changed she said I was full of energy I had clarity of mind I was strong in my spirit in my body and I was able to drive home without any problems she said it was like night and day right amen and so I'm like thank you Lord thank you Jesus and so I've spoken with her since and she said yeah I can't tell you the difference she goes I cannot tell. and what was it the word of God the word of God when we hear the word it activates you it heals you it transforms you amen, amen. hallelujah that was number three number four another person she calls me she says I have a fever a fever of 101 and she immediately asked for prayer and so she says within two minutes of praying her temperature went from 101 to 98 and she took a picture and she sent it to me to prove it <laughs> the Lord broke the fever right away come on this is biblical did Jesus not do this this is what Jesus and that's what we're called to do right number number five another tested uh, another testifier that she works at a home, senior citizens, many of them had tested positive uh, for COVID. She has not. She has been tested, I think she said 15 times. I can't remember the exact number. It was a high number. But she said no COVID results. No COVID. And she said she started, started to develop mild symptoms, like cold symptoms. She came for prayer, and she said she immediately, those symptoms immediately left, and they never returned they don't return and so we speak to those demon spirits and say you don't get to return and then the last one number six another one um, same thing with all you know all these different symptoms going on she called for prayer and you know what we cast out a spirit of death that was trying to take her life by strangulation yeah, I was trying to take her life by strangling, like where you can't breathe and you feel like you're suffocating. But in that case, it was a spirit of death. And let me tell you, you have to, when we have wisdom, we have the understanding of the Lord and he gives us discernment, you're going to know exactly how to pray and exactly how to take authority. You are not to be, you're not to be afraid. You are not to walk under fear, but instead you are going to walk strengthened in the Lord, fully equipped for the battle. Amen. Is everyone listening? Is everyone paying attention? Are we all like on the same page? Yes. We are all on the same page because of Christ almighty and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So those are just six that I know of that just that I happen to be made aware of. But I know there's a lot more. Hallelujah. Andrew, how you doing? He says, I'm great. Amen. So let's give God glory. Let's give him praise for those. Lord, I thank you, Father God. Lord, you get all the praise and all the glory. But you know what? This is important for us to share. I'm sorry. Pastor Jeff's brother, he laying on a sick bed. Come on. He basically 0% chance to live. This one was due to cancer, right? And, and, and what happened? Pray. We prayed. That's what happened. And what, what was the results? Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. And then what happened? Zero. Wanted, Zero. So Come on. Understand the severity of this. Lung cancer stage four metastasized onto a bone in his lymphatic system. Amen. They sent hospice away and said, there's nothing we can do for this guy. Yep. And John came home. That was around Thanksgiving. Um, through us, the Lord yep. planted um, I binded every spirit of unbelief in that home. They're all Christians, <laughs> mm -hmm. but but they don't like you know. Maybe it was just fear. I mean, I love my family. I love my nieces. Um, but so Hallelujah. I've been up there a couple times, and the last time we were we were at a gun shop, <laughs> and uh, he gets this phone call, and his doctor says, "Hey, it's working." And John goes, how do you know that? He goes, because you'd have been dead. No, he said, you would have been six feet under two weeks ago. <laughs> so we believe it's working. Next week, no sign of it. I'm telling you. I am telling you. So this is, this is uh, we want to share these testimonies because we want everyone's faith to be built up. Amen. Because the same Holy Spirit that flows through us flows through you. Amen? And you're in a church that believes in the power of God to heal today. Yes. You're in a church that believes that we have authority to cast out demons and they must go. Amen. You're in a place where, believe, where we believe in prayer to actually release the supernatural and it happens. Amen. And so I say these things not because we take any credit because we don't, but we give all glory to God. But God does use individuals. He does want to pray through you. He wants to use you in the lives of people. So get ready. It's only going to get better. Say it's about ready to get better. It's getting gooder and gooder. It's getting gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> You know why I say that? Because even as we are all in this time period together, God has chosen us to be here at this specific time and place in history, right? With all this craziness going on around us. But yet, uh, what's within you is the power to slay those dragons, right? Amen. What's within you is the power to rise up and to heal the sick. It's the power to speak forth the name of Jesus and see people that don't know Jesus. Jesus come to an understanding of the saving grace that he has already provided that's what's in it for us so that's what's in it for me amen the Bible says he who endures to the end will be saved he who endures to the end will be saved. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power that your word gives us. I thank you that every ear is going to be able to hear the word of truth and it's going to help them strengthen them. Every eye right now, even their, the eyes of their spirit man are opened to understanding what you have for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Spirit of the living God, speak through me tonight and I thank you that all that you want to say and do shall happen in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. It's not over. Endure to the end. Tonight's message is titled, It's Not Over. Endure to the end. Our trust is not in man. Never was and never will be. Our trust is in God alone. Yet we know that God does use people to bring forth his, his, his will. 
his purposes, right? He uses people. But we must stop believing every lie that you hear. We must stop believing the, the fake news and the twisted media. And some people really honestly just need to shut it off. Just shut off the TV and you need to shut off some of the social media that's just bombarding you with a whole bunch of lies and a very scripted narrative. Amen? If they can control your thinking, they can control your belief. And so it's important that we allow the spirit of the living God to speak to us uh, and that we walk in the belief that he has already spoken to us, that the greater one lives on the inside of us, right? We've been called, we've been fashioned and formed for such a time as this. The word is very clear. A thousand may fall by your side. 10,000 by your right hand, it shall not come near you. Say, it's not going to come near me in the mighty name of Jesus. What has the Lord told you? It's important that you stop enough to think, to ask God, get into the presence of the king and ask him, what have you told me personally? What should my opinion be? What should my view be? Because personally for me, I can speak for myself. I am still standing for that third day miracle. I am still standing and I am still believing. And I remember the, that there were 10 spies that said, no, it cannot be done. But there were two spies that said, yes, we see the giants in the land. But we are well able to overcome. We are well able to take this over, right? Amen. There may be giants and there are lots of them. There may be giants, but we are well able to overcome coming to overtake them. We have to know this. Any discouragement, any unbelief right now has to get out. It has to leave. has to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. No matter what you've heard, no matter what has, has maybe even gripped your heart that is not of God, we cast it out right now in Jesus' name. I want you to say it over yourselves. I cast out all unbelief. I cast out all fear. I cast out all negativity. I cast out all trepidation. I cast out all control. I cast out all witchcraft. I cast Cast it out. It shall not come near me. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I have the ability to hear him. I have the ability to reason through the word of God by the power of the spirit. And I shall not be manipulated in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I believe that God is looking for the Joshua's and the Caleb and the Caleb's of this generation. Men of courage and men of integrity. Men, meaning men and women, of courage and integrity. I believe that is what he is looking for in this day and age. Men and women that are going to stand like Joshua's and like Caleb's. And they will stand in truth and say, no matter what, we see the hand of God. We're going to look and we're going to see. You may, you'll look and you'll see the hand of the enemy everywhere you go. But can you look and see the hand of God? Because that's what you have to be able to look and see. Because when your eyes get on the hand of God, you're going to go forward with the message that he has given you and you will not shrink back. Say, I'm not shrinking back. Not shrinking back. That's good. So the news is definitely dictating a false narrative in order to, dece to deceive and control the masses. And I don't know about you. I don't know all of you and what you believe and what you hear. But there is definitely a control, mass control right now. But this is nothing new. It's been going on for quite some time. Amen. Nothing new. But it certainly has increased, it has become increasingly worse and worse. It really has. With all the censorship now, everything's being censored. You know, accounts being shut down if you have them. You say something, oh, and you get marked, you get put in jail. You get put in Facebook jail. You know, all these kind of, you know, this has happened, but it's increasing. Now it's to the point to where, you know, you, they're, they're, they're blocking and they're limiting your freedom of speech. Amen. Oh, we got to wake up and not allow this to happen. Amen. We got to wake up and say, oh no, I see it happening. We see it happening. But at the same time, we can't roll over and play dead. When God says something to you, when he puts something on the inside of you, you've got to have the Holy Ghost boldness to speak up no matter what. I just heard today of some, they're here in California, and, and they were just a regular street preacher, but they had one of those horns, and they were pulled over by the police saying, you can't do that. 
because you're disturbing the peace. And, and they actually, this individual that was not by himself, he was not, you know, it wasn't this crowd, it wasn't the rowdy riot, nothing like that. He's been doing this for a long, long time. But now, but now, he gets put in jail. He, they literally handcuffed him and, put, and brought him, why? Because you're disturbing the peace? Right, exactly. No, there is an agenda. And so what am I saying is, you know, we've talked so much about the book of Acts and how, so, you know, they said, I can't help but preach in that name. I can't help but preach. We've got to have that tenacity. We've got to be able to not let any fear. So daily, daily sometimes, you may even have to do this daily, but daily you're going to have to make sure, do some self-evaluation and command any spirits of fear to leave you, even if you think they may be there. Even if you think. Like it's just a good idea, especially right now. You know why? Because there is such a spirit of the air right now that controls so many Amen. people. They don't even know. They don't know. There are believers that don't understand that it's like a plague right now. You know, spells and hex, they've been cast out. Guys, they really have. They've been cast, okay? They've been implemented. And so what happens is people, good people, Christians, right? But they don't know how to war. They don't know how to fight. So instead of waiting until something happens and you're just such, you're just in the dumps, instead of waiting until I don't know what to do, I feel so down and discouraged. It is a good idea right now to make sure you take authority and you command things to leave you that are there or might be there. Whether they are there or whether they might be there, you command them to leave. Fear, you know, intimidation, any kind of control. You've got to keep your sword sharp. We have to keep our sword sharp, and this is how we do it. Trust me. Oh, my goodness. You know, I've been preaching on authority for how long now? For a long, long time. And you know what I find? It's not enough. Amen. It really isn't. Like the church still, we, you know, we still need to hear it. We still need to continue to grow in this, and that's okay. That's okay. Because you know what? As long as God gives me breath in my lungs, I'm going to continue to do what I'm called to do which is to equip, which is to equip, which is to impart, which is to, you know, fire up the saints uh, and get those demons out of there in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so we get to do this together as well, right? But I got to tell you something right now. Turn it off. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Because that's exactly what's happening. People get, they hear all this garbage and it's like drinking the Kool-Aid. It's like getting deceived, right? Amen. We're not doing that. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 10. Because in Matthew chapter 10, it says here that we are to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. 10, 16. Let me, let me put these on real quick. Okay. Verse 16. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Hey, that's us. I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Pretty figurative language, but it's correct. It's exactly what's happening right now. Therefore, don't be afraid of it. Don't cower. Don't be, don't, don't be like, I'm not going to go out. That's it. Therefore, instead, be wise as a serpent and harmless or as innocent, depending on the version that you're reading, harmless as doves, innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour. What you should speak. Somebody needs to get an amen on the inside of them. In that hour, it will be given to you what you should speak. For it is not you who will speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Say, spirit of the living God right now. I ask you to fill me baptize me and empower me that when I open my mouth it will not be me but it will be only you that speaks in the mighty name of Jesus now when you've asked God that kind of prayer when you've prayed that and you've asked that you've got to know that he has listened he has heard and he has taken you seriously that when you open your mouth but you've got to stay in a position of confidence you got to stay in a position of authority and the minute that Fear creeps in your heart because it does for everyone. 
It tries for every person. There's nobody that is excluded from that. So the minute that you can sense that little bit of trepidation, that little bit of fear, that little bit of doubt, uh uh, say, nope. You get your Holy Ghost boots on if you have to. Do whatever you need to. Jump up and down. Do what, get the word screaming out of your mouth and remember what you just prayed. You remember that the Holy Spirit's going to speak out of you. And you know, it's important because the times that we live in, you know, you know, it's crazy. It's flat out crazy out there. Amen. Daughter was at the, yesterday they were, they went to the orange um, circle and uh, to go get something to eat, you know, and uh, with, the, with the little ones. And um, at the parking lot, the restaurants were fine. They had outdoor seating and everything, but it was in the parking lot that this happened. But, you know, and uh, just a whole, a whole group of, of people, kids, I think she said, but but they were all yelling at them. This is just a mom and her daughter. Like this, you know, they were yelling at them uh, and, and, and her friend and their kids. They were yelling at them and telling them, go home, go home. All they were trying to do was go get something to eat. You know, and they're just yelling and barking. And you know, and the little one's like, why are they yelling at us to go home, mommy? You know, and it's like, this is ridiculous, you know? And they, they got their food and they, they really, honestly, they left because it was, it was quite frightening for them. And, um, this is just an orange, you know, just, so, you know, I say this because I want you to know, yeah, these are the days we're living in. We walk, we need to walk in wisdom. We, we want to be at the right place at the right time, not the wrong place at the wrong time. And there is such a thing, but when you walk with the wisdom of God and you ask him, should I go here? Should I not? He will direct your steps. You don't walk in fear, but you do walk in wisdom. And it's really, really critical that our relationship with Jesus Christ is so strong, stronger now than ever. Yes. Really, it really is. We've got to have more time in his presence, fasting and seeking his face. Critical right now, so critical. It's really critical right now. So verse 21, it says, Now brother will deliver, uh, will deliver a brother to death and father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. You know, sometimes people, you know, they, they oh, Jesus came to bring peace. Jesus came to bring peace. Well, I don't know what Bible you're reading out of. I'm not really sure exactly what Bible you're reading because that's not what Jesus came to bring. He came to bring a sword. There's division, guys. And here's the difference. Whoever, yeah, whoever is going to serve me, saith the Lord, Amen. then you come here. You can't serve God and serve mammon, which is the love of money. You can't serve God, but at the same time, have your children above him. You can't serve God and have your comfortable surroundings above God. You can't serve God, but also say, but I need my spouse. I can't live without my spouse. I, you know, and they're, they're my spouse is above God. No, you cannot have that. You have to be sold out. Seek first Matthew 6 33 but seek first the kingdom of God right and his righteousness and then all of these things will be added unto us but we have to keep the first thing first we got to keep the right thing right we have to we have to have this in the right perspective right so when people tell you that Jesus came to bring peace well he gave us peace his believers right we walk in his peace that is true he says he gives us peace. We get peace from him, and he tells us that we should be, always be, walking in the peace of God. Anything disturbs your peace? That's right. You say, oh, no, 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 I'm not exchanging what God offered to me for something that the enemy is trying to give me because I'm not going to exchange what's good and what's divine, right, for something that's unholy and, and it's ungodly right? So that kind of peace God's given us, and we should hang on to that peace. Absolutely. But there is, but the sword, meaning if, if you don't have your heart solidified and yours completely 100% set apart for Christ, okay? When, when, when that happens, let's just use this as an example. You say yes to Jesus. You 
you start growing in him and you are so sold out you become so radical in your family maybe they don't understand and therefore now comes the division and therefore now comes the pointing of the finger and now all of a sudden the ridicule right and, and so that's where the sword which is the word of God which is a double-edged sword it heals but also it cuts right and so that's where that sword sometimes can be divisive because God is saying do I have have all of you no matter what and that is the question we have to all answer individually and say yes Lord no matter where else would we go because he holds the keys to life right where else would we go absolutely but it takes a sold-out bride in the face of adversity to say no matter what's going on Lord I still choose you and I'm not gonna cower I'm not gonna shrink back in fear I'm not gonna shut up if you've told me to speak now if God's told you to be quiet because there is a point in time where he says I want you to be quiet and don't say that then you must be able to hear the voice of the Lord and walk in the discernment of God critical amen? amen so that's just called maturity and I believe God is maturing his bride and he's doing that very very thing right now hallelujah so let's keep reading here uh, let, let's go verse 25 is it enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub which means Lord of the flies which denotes the devil if they've called the master the devil, he's saying here, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. Do not fear them. Do not fear when even Christians are being divided and telling you that you're of the devil, that you're deceived. Do not fear them. For there, it says, is nothing covered that will not be revealed. All, and it says, and hidden that will not be known. Every lie will be exposed. And the truth shall be revealed. I want you to say that over yourselves right now. And the truth shall be revealed. Yeah, every lie will be exposed and the truth shall be revealed. Every lie every lie father expose every lie and reveal the truth father God expose the lie right now and we lift up our president right now president Trump and we thank you father for him and I thank you Lord God that Lord every lie will be exposed and the truth shall be revealed in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for what you're doing we know Lord God that you are almighty and your arm is not too short that it cannot save so we thank you we bind up the powers and the principalities that are coming against him we bind them up we overturn them by the blood of the lamb in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's children said amen amen amen, amen. that's right verse 27 this is where Jesus teaches the fear of God he says whatever I tell you in the dark speak in the light and what you hear in, in, in the ear, preach it on the housetops. And do not fear those that kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's womb. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Never forget that, church. Never forget that. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than all, than many sparrows. Verse 32, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. This is important that we remember this scripture, especially with where we're at right now in our culture. Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess him him before my father but whoever denies me before men him I will also deny before my father who is in heaven 